I'm Patrick Moriarty. I work for IRC. We believe that everybody in the world, every human, every man, woman, child, has a right, a fundamental right, to a water, a sanitation, hygiene service. And to be honest, lots of people believe that. And lots of people who work in our sector are familiar with the figures we all steer towards. 700 and something million people who don't have access to water. 2.5 billion people who don't have access to sanitation. And that's a challenge and we can all commit to that. But that challenge is absolutely the tip of the iceberg. Behind that challenge, behind those people who don't have access, there's a ton of people who had access to something once, but it doesn't work anymore. That's about 30% of people who once were able to go to a pump and now it's broken down. So they either have to walk an awful lot further or they have to just go and drink some polluted water from some nearby source. But behind even those figures, there's an uncounted number of people who have access to a lousy, lousy service. If you wandered down to your kitchen in the morning and turned on the tap and it didn't work, and then it stayed like that for a month, you probably wouldn't feel that you had access to a service, but actually that's what the reality is for an awful lot of people in developing countries all around the world. And that's the space that IRC works into. We don't make toilets, we don't put pipes in the ground. What we do do is we work with the people who do that. We work with the people who invest in that. That means primarily we work with governments, but we also work with charities, we work with NGOs. And when we talk about a water service, we're talking about a quantity of water of a given quality, at a given reliability, and with an acceptable level of accessibility. And we want that to be working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We've put a lot of effort into understanding how it can be done and how much it'll cost. It doesn't cost a lot, it costs between five and ten dollars per person per year, so relatively small amounts of money. And yet the reality is, if you spend any time in developing countries, as I've done, I've lived ten years in various parts of Africa, you see that that relatively simple vision isn't being achieved, that people are building latrines and they're collapsing, that people are pushing in hand pumps and they're breaking down, that people are spending hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to put in complicated pipe networks and they've been washed away in flash floods. And when that happens, somebody who is used to getting up in the morning and maybe spending half an hour walking to a water point with a jerry can and then walking back carrying 20 litres, so that's 20 kilos of water, they suddenly, that pump isn't working and instead of walking for half an hour, they have to spend two hours or three hours. Or maybe somebody who was, for a couple of years, was going to a latrine that was in the compound of their house, isn't able to anymore because the latrine's filled up and there's no one to come and empty it and the people uh, lack the skills or the knowledge to build themselves a new latrine. And that we see as a waste. It's a waste of their human potential. It's a waste of the investment that possibly you or possibly a government made in bringing the person to that level of service in the first place. I think that if you're someone looking to invest in the water and sanitation sector, it's always going to be tempting to satisfy the immediate need, to take your money and to bring services to another 10,000 people. But if you want your investment to be more than a drop in the ocean, you've got to put it somewhere that can be catalytic, that can change the system that lies behind providing water and sanitation services. We're leading the way with what we bring as IRC, our knowledge, the tools that we've developed, tools for analysing service levels, tools for monitoring, tools for looking into the costs of providing sustainable services over time, but we certainly can't do it by ourselves and we're looking for collaborators, we're looking for people who are prepared to work with us to achieve that vision, which I believe should be a shared vision for all of us in the sector.